It has been a very, very rough past two seasons for Chesterfield FC. The 1997 FA Cup semi-finalists have suffered back-to-back -back relegations, dropping from the third to the fourth tier and now fourth to fifth tier. Meaning the club originally founded 152 years ago in 1866 will spend next season in the conference. For the last time until at least FIFA 20, we have an opportunity to save Chesterfield. Whilst only in the virtual landscape, we will attempt to not only restore hope among Chesterfield supporters, but bring them European football and glory. Ladies and gentlemen, let's rebuild Chesterfield FC. G'day guys, how's it going? It is Jared HD here. We are back for another monster rebuild video. I am almost certain this is gonna take me about a week to record, but you know what? It is going to be worth it. I love doing these massive rebuilds, and we're gonna be doing one now with Chesterfield FC. But fellas, if you do go on to enjoy today's monster rebuild with Chesterfield FC, make sure you leave a like on the video, and also make sure you bloody scorpion kick that subscribe button down below if you are new around here. About 15,000 subscribers away from 200,000, so hopefully we can hit that target sometime soon. For those of you who have not seen a rebuilding challenge video yet, here are the rules. So the main objective of this is to take a team to the Champions League final. We will be simulating every single game up until the Champions League final, which we will play ourselves. We can make whatever transfers we like. Realistic, unrealistic, it does not matter. There's a big focus on the transfer window, only showing players that we sign. And finally, don't get butt hurt if I sell your favorite player. Let's get into the rebuild. So this is our starting 11 for the first season. Obviously, I don't plan on keeping this entire squad for the entire rebuild. We'll see what we can do over the next 5, 10, 15 seasons and see if we can get Chesterfield a Champions League title. But I'll talk to you guys when we get some business done. And we go ahead and bring in our first player for the Chesterfield rebuild. We go to the A-League, my home league, traveling to the Wellington Phoenix to bring in Sapreet Singh. Great young talent. 800,000 pounds. Welcome to Chesterfield. Bloody stoked with this transfer as well. Alexis Vega joining us at Chesterfield for 1.55 million pounds. The Mexican striker is really going to help us out up top this season. Two players in, two quality players. I'd rather bring in two quality players than five average players, but it's Zing and Vega into the club. This is what our starting 11 looks like right now. Honestly, I have no idea what to expect from this first season, but I'll check in with you guys on the 1st of January. So, I mean, here we are on the 1st of January, and we're in a pretty similar position to what happened with Chesterfield in real life this season. 22nd position. Luckily, we can't get relegated in FIFA, but my goal is to finish a few positions higher. Let's, like, avoid the the metaphorical relegation spots, like if there was relegation in FIFA 18 for League 2, let's try avoiding those spots if that makes sense. But currently it is Swindon Town, Notts County and Mansfield Town in the top three. And no real surprise to see us not doing any business in January. Financially didn't have that much to put towards a quality signing and also had to renew some contracts so that we didn't have players leaving on pre-contract deals. But anyways, I'll see you guys at the end of season one. I do not expect a promotion battle, but I just want to have a respectable second half of the season. So we finish our first season in charge of Chesterfield in 19th position on 53 points. I mean, if this was real life, Chesterfield would survive or would have survived relegation, which I'm happy to see. But again, just got to improve upon this every season from now on. And Mansfield Town, Colchester, and Luton Town all automatically promoted. We'll see in a second who got the playoff spot. No great surprise to see us doing nothing in the FA Cup. Don't expect to do anything for a little while still, but West Brom managed to win the FA Cup. Bournemouth won the Carabao Cup. Scunthorpe United won the Checker Trade Trophy. Swindon Town got the automatic, or sorry, the promotion spot in the playoffs. Bayern Munich won the Champions League final. And Roma won the Europa League. So next season should be a real challenge. A lot of players we had this season are ending their loan spells. So a big challenge in season two, but let's see what we can do 
with Chesterfield. Philip Kern is going to be our first signing for season number two. We needed a new goalkeeper after Ramsdale completed his loan spell, and we have done just that. Philip Kern coming from Leipzig for £1.35 million. Pounds. A deadline day departure here as Jordan Sinnott is departing the club to Exeter City for £390,000. And another deadline day departure here as Scott Wiseman departs the club off to Doncaster for £130,000. We have literally milked every last cent out of our budget, or I should say every last pence, considering we're talking in pound, but Chris Durkin is going to sign for us on transfer deadline day. The American midfielder comes across from DC United for £1.2 million. Pounds. So again, another busy transfer window. Kern and Durkin in, Sinot and Wiseman, or Wiseman, out of the club. Our starting 11, slowly but surely getting there. It's just about getting rid of the old sort of Deadwood players that aren't going to go anywhere in this rebuild, replacing them with young talent that can grow up over the seasons and hopefully one day get us on the path to Champions League glory. So, I forgot to check in exactly on halfway, but I'm on deadline day now, and we are sitting in a beautiful position, top of League 2, 61 points. I don't care where we finish, as long as we get automatic promotion. First, second, third, I would be absolutely stoked. And at the moment, fingers crossed, we are on target for that. And I mean, quite obviously, if you look at our bank balance, £247 in the wage budget, that meant we weren't going to be able to do any business in this window. Will it be enough to keep us in the promotion race, keep us in that top three? We're about to find out. And there it is. We are headed up to League One next season. We finish in second position, just behind Fleetwood Town. They're on 89 points, we're on 87. Northampton on 86. It probably would have come down to the last day considering Cheltenham are on 85 points and Exeter on 83, so a little bit closer than we had hoped, but we get promoted nonetheless. Liverpool did win the FA Cup Final 3-1 over Burnley. And Spurs won the Carabao Cup. Rotherham won the Checker Trade Trophy. Exeter will be joining us, Fleetwood Town and Northampton in the League One next season. Bayern Munich win yet another Champions League title. And AS Monaco take down Liverpool to win the Europa League. So season two, definitely a massive improvement. Didn't expect us to go that well. Let's see if we can continue this run of form on as we get into Season 3 in League 1. Life in League 1 begins with a player signing, a centre-back signing to be more specific. It is Ezri Konsa coming across from Charlton Athletic for £1.5 million. And on transfer deadline day, we bring ourselves in another centre midfielder. Tristan Nydam is coming from Ipswich for £1.3 million. An absolute bargain. And we're going to go ahead and boost up our squad depth as well, signing a new backup centre back, Facundo Vega, an Argentinian centre back, coming in on a free transfer. So another quality window here. Three players in, Cons. Nidam and Vega didn't want to go ahead and sell anybody. Our squad depth isn't incredible. That's part of the reason why I went ahead and brought in a new center back as rotation. But let's see what this squad can do for this third season. Can we make a push for promotion or will we be in a relegation battle? So here we are halfway through the season and we are well and truly in the promotion race. We sit in eighth position. Seven points away from the promotion zone, so a bit of work to do if we want to get there, but we can still dream, we can still hope about getting promotion. I feel like that's definitely more realistic compared to getting relegated, but even that's still not out of the picture, so let's hope it's a good second half of the season. We don't have too much money to work with, but I'm going to continue to at least attempt bolstering the squad. Another free agent comes in, another regen player, Mateo. Aliendro, another Argentinian. We might be building a bit of an Argentinian squad here, but the attacking midfielder joins us on a free. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get another regen player here. Victor Ramos Gomez, 
18 years of age, a good backup right back, potentially could even take over from our current right back, Barry. Welcome to Chesterfield, Victor Ramos Gomez. Aliendro and Ramos Gomez into the club. Our squad is looking pretty solid, but will it be enough to get us promoted? That is a different question. I will see you guys at the end of season number three with Chesterfield. So at the end of the third season, we finish in fourth position, only three points of automatic promotion, but we're gonna have to battle it out with some big names in English football. Blackburn Rovers, Wigan Athletic, and Portsmouth. Will one of these fallen giants get up to the championship or will we get back-to-back -back promotion? Just quickly having a look at the other end of the table, it is Oldham Athletic, Bradford City, Bristol Rovers and South End United all going down to League 2. Manchester United did go on to win the FA Cup though and Manchester City won the Carabao Cup. Bristol Rovers won the Checker Trade Trophy and we won the League 1 playoffs. Get in there, back-to-back -back relegations in real life, but back-to-back -back promotions in this rebuild. We took down Wigan in the semis and Blackburn Rovers 2-0 in the final. We're in the championship, baby. Manchester City did go on and win the Champions League final and Inter Milan won the Europa League. So if I'm being 100% honest, I did not expect us to get promoted this season, but I'm not complaining. We now have to try surviving the championship. I'm not expecting back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back promotions, but we'll see what we can do in season four with Chesterfield. We bolster our attacking options for this championship season. Ermadan Demirovic is gonna be our first signing for season four. The Bosnian striker comes from Alaves for 2.7 million pounds a release clause bargain. Upgrading our defense again here, a center-back signing as William Bianda is arriving from RC Lens in the French League for 1.1 million pounds. So again, just grinding away this transfer window, trying to get ourselves some new talent in. As you can see, we have done just that. We have brought in Demirovic and Bianda into the side. Our starting 11 slowly but surely getting there. I mean, up front, we are absolutely deadly. Interested to see what this season holds. I honestly couldn't predict it if I wanted to, but we'll check in on the 1st of January. So, on the 1st of January, we're in a good position. Better than I would take, or better than I expected, I should say. And I most definitely would take it. We're sitting in 11th position on 33 points, but... The position, not great. The points though, very good. We're only four points away from sixth place Fulham, my favorite team in real life. But if we have a good second half of the season, there is no reason why we couldn't be in the picture for the playoffs, at least. I think automatic promotion is a little bit out of our range, but the playoffs, most certainly, we could definitely get there. And then taking a look at the drop zone for the championship, Sunderland, Hull City, and Millwall all in big trouble in this fourth season. And again, we blow virtually our entire budget in the summer window. January rolls around and we're unable to do anything. I mean, look at that. We've got 23,000 pound in our wage budget. Let's see how our first season in the championship, season four, four overall finishes up. So it is not promotion at the end of season four, but it is survival and it is a good season nonetheless. We finish in 11th spot, 60 points. I will definitely take that. Brighton and Bournemouth, automatic promotion. And Sunderland escape relegation, but Hull and Millwall can't. They are joined by Sheffield Wednesday, or Sheffield United, I should say, who are going back down to League One. Manchester City did go on and win at the FA Cup. Crystal Palace win the Carabao Cup. Huddersfield take down Cardiff City in the final of the championship playoffs, and they will be back in the Premier League. Manchester United win an All English Champions League final, and Arsenal win the Europa League. So we've gone back to basics. The next few seasons are most likely going to be foundational ones to make sure that we absolutely kill it once we get to the Premier League. But season four, Done and dusted, let's continue our journey with Chesterfield. So we've only been given about 2.9 million pounds to work with this season. So I'm thinking let's go ahead 
get some young regen players in that we can sell on in a couple of seasons time get our financials up and bolstered Hayden Campbell is going to come into the club here 18 years of age 66 rated center back must have had a haircut looking at his picture on the left there but welcome to Chesterfield mate and we bring in a new starting 11 center back upgrading the spot again Dominic Dinga the Serbian center back joining us here for 1.7 million pounds another release clause picker another regen free agent player coming in here Jake Conroy a midfielder 66 rated welcome to Chesterfield mates and a player departure here as Christian Dennis is making the move to Coventry Coventry sorry for 310,000 pounds Logan Tholen is going to be joining us here, the Belgian centre midfielder, signing on a free, rejecting Lazio and joining us. That is a big plus for us. Welcome, mate. So that is the end of this transfer window. Not too much money spent, but a few players brought in. Campbell, Dinger, Conroy, Tholen into the club. Dennis out of the club. This is what the starting 11 looks like. So we can see a lot of the players we've bought beginning to grow. We're just trying to build out a solid base of players so that once we can actually get some money into the club, we can have some success. But I don't know what to expect for this fifth season. Let's see how we do in the championship. All right, so on the 1st of January, we sit in fifth position on 38 points, well and truly in the promotion battle. Hopefully we can make a deep push and get playoff football this season. Maybe we have an incredible second half of the season and get to the play, uh, get automatic promotion, excuse me. That would be fantastic, but I'm, I'm happy with this. I am happy with this. We're not in the relegation battle. We're up the top. Relegation battle is Norwich, Peterborough, and Sheffield Wednesday, but let's see what we can do in January and hopefully get ourselves into the Premier League, or at least close to the Premier League for season number six. We're going to make our first pre-contract signing for this Chesterfield rebuild, and it is going to be someone that maybe hasn't lived up to his potential in the Premier League at this point of the rebuild. He was transfer listed by Man City, but fortunately for us, he was available on a free deal. So our new left back next season, where is it? Why can't I accept him? It's not letting me accept him. You're kidding me. Why can't I accept him? Okay, I need to figure this out. Okay, this is not good. No actions available. I've gone two days further. I think I'm gonna have to wait for this to expire and then go in and do it manually. But come on, Fifi, you gotta get this crap sorted. All right, so we got it sorted. Had to go in and do it manually. So next season on a free transfer, we will be welcoming, welcoming Alexander Zinchenko to the club from Manchester City, our new left back. Very exciting to have Zinchenko coming into the squad next season. Let's see though, the big question is whether he'll be playing for us in the Championship or the Premier League. We'll suss that out at the end of the season. So here we are at the end of the season. Wolves and Aston Villa going up to the Premier League. Wolves have killed it just like they did in real life this past season. But it is between us, Brentford, QPR and Cardiff to see who goes and joins those two very, very close as well. We finish on 76 with Brentford, QPR one point ahead of us, Carter City two points ahead of us. So this is a very evenly contested final four, three to six. Will we join Wolves and Aston Villa in the Premier League? We're gonna find out. But quickly looking at the other end of the table, Norwich, Wigan and Peterborough all down to League One. Arsenal do go on and win the FA Cup. We make it to the quarterfinals of the Carabao Cup where we lose to the eventual winners in Bournemouth. And we join Wolves and Aston Villa in the Premier League next season. 2-1 in the semi-finals over QPR and 1-0 in the final over Brentford. Get in there, lads. Season six, we'll see Chesterfield a Premier League side. Juventus did go on and win the Champions League final as well. I wonder how long it's going to take us to make the jump from Premier League to Champions League. And Barcelona won an all-Spanish Europa League final. So I am over the moon that we have got ourselves up to the Premier League. Season 6 though is all about survival. Will we be good enough to survive in the Premier League? We're going to have to go and find out. So we begin life in the Premier League with a big free agent signing. I'm just gonna call this guy Gerson. 
He has signed here on a free, a free agent, 77 rated already at age 20. He will slot right into our starting 11. Welcome, Gerson Antunes Ribeiro. A great pickup here for our back line. Trying to get the overalls up, trying to do everything we can to get some decent players into. Avoid relegation. Joe Worrell coming into the club from Brighton. He had a 5.5 million pound release clause. Would have been stupid not to take that one up. So welcome to Chesterfield, Joe Worrell. So two players into the club for this window. Trying our best to make sure that we are going to give ourselves the best shot of surviving this season so and Tunez Ribeiro and Worrell into the club looking to potentially to bring in a another backup striker through free agency but we'll see what we can do as the rebuild goes on if not I'll talk to you guys on the 1st of January so here we are halfway through the season and we are exactly where we thought we would be in the relegation battle we are in the thick of it only one point out of it Burnley, Aston Villa, and Liverpool, surprisingly, taking up those spots. Man City in 17th. We need to hope we have a good second half of the season and avoid relegation. It is going to be tough. And right now, Everton leading the Premier League table. Again, bringing players in when we have no money in January isn't an easy job. We haven't been able to do it. I was looking at maybe another pre-contract player or a free agent, but not to be. Let's see if this team is enough to let us survive in the Premier League for another season. Unfortunately, fellas, it was not enough to keep us in the Premier League. And for the first time in a long time, we have been relegated. We have only spent one season in the Premier League. We're going to have to go down to the championship. Hopefully, we don't lose our goddamn job. And we can reconvene re our squad and come back in what would be season eight with a better crack of Premier League survival. But I wasn't lying when I said this rebuild was going to be tough. We're going down to the championship with the two sides that came up with us, Wolves and Aston Villa. We were only four points away from taking Brighton down. Very disappointing to have been relegated. Looking at the other end of the scale, other end of the table, not that it means much really to us, but... Chelsea do win the Premier League. We did make it to the round of 16 of the FA Cup where we eventually lost to Southampton. Chelsea went on and won the FA Cup. Everton did manage to win the Carabao Cup. Barcelona won the Champions League final and Manchester United won the Europa League final. So now is the moment of truth. Will we be carrying on with Chesterfield into season seven? Yes, we are. We're not sacked. The rebuild continues. Let's go and hit the big old reset button in the championship and get back up to the Premier League stronger than ever. Upgrading our defense once again. Reese Oxford coming down to the championship, joining us here at Chesterfield for 9.7 million pounds. Daniel Cotan Perez is joining the club here. We've got a bit of a track record now bringing in the best free agents every season. And we're doing it again. 76 rated, 20 years of age, centre midfielder. Welcome to Chesterfield, mates. Oxford and Coton Perez into the squad. Again, just trying to get ourselves right back up to the Premier League better than ever. Making sure that once we get to the Premier League again, we stay in the bloody Premier League. But let's see how that journey is going on January 1st. So on the 1st of January, the hunt for promotion is definitely on track. Ourselves and Wolves are in the driver's seats at the moment. We personally are 9 points ahead of Fulham and then 13 points ahead of Preston. So I think it is somewhat safe of a statement to say we'll be playing at least playoff football unless we have a massive crash in the second half of the season. But... If we can try staying in these top two spots, that would be golden. And in terms of the relegation battle, not that we're too involved in it and too interested in it, but Charlton Athletic, Ipswich, and Peterborough are in the relegation zone. I want to make sure that next season we have the best opportunity of staying in the Premier League as possible if we get there. And this deal here is going to make sure that that is a real possibility. Patrick Schick is joining us from Arsenal on a free transfer, 87 rated. If we don't get promoted this season, it will be quite embarrassing, but 
If we do, we're looking to set ourselves up for success, not failure. Welcome next season, Patrick Schick. So Schick coming in next season is going to be incredible and is going to bolster our squad it's going to make us really, really secure in the Premier League, I would say. But we have to get there first. Let's see how Season 7 with Chesterfield ends. Well, there it is. End of the season. And we have been automatically promoted into the Premier League again. Bouncing back from the humiliating relegation. But Wolves tied on points last. They end up winning the championship technically due to goal differential. But... I couldn't give a stuff if I'm being completely honest. I just wanted a promotion. We got it. We're cheering. Ipswich, Charlton, and Bolton all relegated to League One. Preston, Fulham, Brentford, and Middlesbrough all fighting it out for the remaining Premier League spot. Manchester United did go on and win the FA Cup. We made it to the quarterfinals of the Carabao Cup where we lost to Everton. Of course, Man City won that tournament. Preston take down Fulham on penalties in the championship playoff final to get promoted to the Premier League. Chelsea win the Champions League final and Nice beat Napoli to win the Europa League final. Look at that. Wolves made it to the round of 16 and they were in the championship. What? So we do what we wanted. We bounce back. We get promoted and we bring in a big name player like Patrick Schick to join us at Chesterfield next season. We're in the Premier League again. Let's make sure we bloody well stay there. Season 8 with Chesterfield begins with a player departure. We have sold Dominic Dinger to Burnley for £8.9 million. And we also sell on Chris Durkin. He is off to Malaga for £15.5 million. Been here since almost the start of the rebuild, but it's now time to say goodbye. You can tell we're trying to save up money so we can bring in somebody big for this season. Esri Konsa. Off to Leeds United for 10.5 million pounds. And another man, another one of the players that has been here since day one, Joe Rowley, is off to Aston Villa. He signs at Villa Park for 7.7 .7 million pounds. I told you guys that I wanted to bring in somebody big, and we have done just that. Yuri Tielemans with a brand new game face joining us here at Chesterfield. He had a stupid release clause. Monaco, you got to stop doing this, but he had a release clause of 36.7 million pounds. We activated it, we triggered it, and the 89 rated Belgian midfielder signs at Chesterfield. So a very busy transfer window here. Yuri Tielemans into the club. Dinga, Dirk, and Konsa and Rowley all out of it. Very, very busy, but look at our starting 11. That is quality. Just continue to improve the squad every season and hopefully get there. Hopefully can consistently make progress, but let's see if we can survive the relegation zone in season number eight. Rightio, okay. You might wanna you might wanna adjust where you're looking at the screen right now. You might be looking at the relegation zone. You're gonna wanna look up to the top of the screen because Chesterfield are in third position. I mean, I knew we would do better than we did in our first Premier League season, but did I think we'd be in Champions League contention in our first season back? No. We are four points off the title, West Ham and Chelsea above us, Man United four points behind us, Southampton six points behind us. If we can get into the Champions League for next season, that would be incredible. And then, I mean, to look in the relegation zone, Liverpool struggling big time again. They are joined by Wolves and West Brom. And a transfer deadline day departure here. Lawrence Maguire, Maguire off to the French League for £1.5 million. So, Maguire has left the club. Besides that, it's been a pretty mundane transfer window, but... I'm hoping to pick up a player on a pre-contract that would basically shake up the entire rebuild. So hopefully I'll show you guys that as the next clip after this. If not, I'll see you at the end of the season. I've done it, lads. We've got ourselves a new goalkeeper for next season. Oh God, I can already see the comments telling me, why would you do so many free contract signings? I'm sorry, they're not meant to be realistic. It's all fun. And I can't give up the opportunity to bring in Gianluigi Donnarumma, 93 rated goalkeeper, will be joining us at Chesterfield 
in season number nine. So we will be playing Champions League football in season number nine. And I tell you what, we could give it a real shake up. We'll have Donnarumma, Schick and Tielemans at least for that season. So I'm excited to see what we can do potentially. But we finished 11 points away from first place Chelsea who ended up winning the Premier League Wolves. West Brom and Preston North End all relegated. Liverpool managed to pull themselves out of the relegation zone. So we made it to the round of 16 of the FA Cup where we lost to the eventual runners-up in Everton. They lost the FA Cup final to Spurs on a penalty shootout. And we made it to the semi-finals. Sorry, I thought I almost said quarterfinals. Then I noticed we beat Stoke. We made it to the semi-finals of the Carabao Cup where we lost to Newcastle United. Manchester United ended up winning the Champions League final on penalties against Atletico Madrid. And Everton won the Europa League final. Wait, does that mean that we won't be playing Champions League final, Champions League next season if Newcastle won the Carabao Cup and Everton won the Europa League? Because I'm pretty sure both those teams finished behind us. I'll have to wait and see, but that could be quite annoying. Season 8 has been brilliant. I'm interested to see how we go in Season 9, but it's good to be back in the Premier League, and now European football is on the horizon for Chesterfield. Well, he's been here since Season 1, but it is time to say goodbye to Sarpreet Singh, the New Zealand midfielder makes the move to West Bromwich Albion for £16 million. And now, since we have Gianluigi Donnarumma, we have decided that Philip Kern will be returning to his home nation of Germany. Wait, no, he is Swiss. Lol, he's going back to Swiss. He's going to Germany for £23 million. A massive signing here. We are going to bring in Sergio Gomez to the club. The Spanish attacking midfielder signs from Stade Rene for a monster fee of £51.6 million, bolstering our midfield, making us a genuine threat, I believe, for the Premier League title, for all the competitions we're going to be in. So, welcome to Chesterfield, Sergio Gomez. Quality over quantity rears its head again. Gomez into the club, Singh and Kern out of it. And I mean, this starting 11 is starting to really look legit. Parts of the squad we don't need to touch for a long time. Other parts still need rapid improvement. But let's go and check out our Champions League group for the first time. So we're in Group H here for the Champions League in 2025. And we've got an interesting group. AS Monaco, Club Bruges and Zenit St. Petersburg. Are we going to get ourselves to the knockout rounds at our first attempt? Let's go and find out in 3, 2, 1. <laughs> okay, I'll take that. Top of the group, not a single loss, 14 points. That's pretty good. That's better than I expected. I expected us and Monaco to go through, but by that stretch, not as good as we did. Like, I thought we were going to do worse than that, but... I'm happy we're through, and if you look to the top left-hand corner now, we're going to be facing Napoli in the round of 16. And we're making our main goal for the Premier League this season to qualify again for Champions League. I feel like now that we've got our foot in the door in terms of being a Champions League club, we need to keep ourselves there. We sit in fourth position right now, would love to climb even higher. So I mean, when we've done so much business in Jan in summer, sorry, in the opening window, January's window can be quite difficult to get business done. Again, no business done. Let's see what we can do in the Champions League against Napoli. All right, so I genuinely don't know what to expect heading into this game. We've got the away leg against Napoli, a full strength starting 11, just missing Campbell off the bench, but Let's see how we go. Can we get some away goals? Can we get ourselves through to the quarterfinals? Or will we have to wait until at least season number 10? We're about to find out. A lot of names I do not recognize with Napoli, but a lot I do. But we do get an away goal. Vega, our Mexican striker, making it 1-0 half an hour into this game. That is absolutely brilliant. Milica, though, does get a goal, an equalizer there for Napoli. Shit gets us a second away goal. The more away goals, the merrier, and we have a 2-1 advantage headed into the second leg. I am stoked about that. Alright, so we've got the 2-1 advantage headed into this second leg here against Napoli. We're now at home, Napoli traveling to Chesterfield. 
can we get ourselves through to the quarterfinals? We are about to see. We've got a 2-1 advantage. We get a third goal here to make it 3-1. So now Napoli need to score. T. Limmons makes it 2-0 for this leg. 4-1 overall. It's going to take a massive second half effort here for Napoli to get themselves back into this one. 3-0 there, Conroy. We have absolutely killed it. I did not expect us to do this well. What's that? 5-1 now. And that's the way it is going to end. We're into the quarters. A dominant display against Napoli. So we are facing another Italian team here. It is Juventus in the quarterfinals. Can we get ourselves one lay or two games, one stage away from the Champions League final? We're going to find out. So it is the away leg first. A big fan of that. But we have a big blow here up front. Patrick Schick out for the next two months. So, that's a key loss. We get a goal in the fifth minute. Vegas stepping up big. Dybala does equalize there for Mariano. Juventus. But we have an away goal, which is massive. Can we get another one? Vega, right now, our player of the video, player of the episode, he has killed it since we signed him. Bernadeschi gets it 2-0, 2-1. Uh, but then Tiedemans makes it 2-all. So, they've got two away goals. Servi puts them back in front which isn't great, but two away goals could come up trumps for us. All right, so it is the home leg now. Still no Schick. 3-2 down, but we have two away goals to play with, so let's go for the outright win. If we get the outright win, there's a good chance that we do go through to the semifinals, but it's a big if. Lots going to happen early on. 25 minutes into it, nothing happening right now. Only a yellow card for Yuri Tielemans, a yellow card for Benton Kerr. Into the second half. Oh, we, there we go. I was about to say, all we need is one goal, and we have it. Gomez putting us ahead on away goals advantage. And if it stays like this, we will be semi-final bound. We're semi-final bound. Okay. This is good. This is real good. So no more Italian opponents to get through. We've wiped the floor with the Italians, but... It is now Bayern Munich in the semi-finals of the Champions League. Can we somehow take them down and get ourselves into a Champions League final here in Season 9 against either Chelsea or United? I hope so, but I'm not holding my breath. We've done well to get to this stage. Let's see if we can go further. The away leg first, which is always good. Got a good luck, good run of form of luck, I should say, with the away legs first in these games. But Yuri Tielemans out for the first leg. Schick back in. Tielemans suspended for the first leg, which might cost us. They've got a very good... That is a really good side there by Munich. Han Kwan Song would be a freak at the moment. Rashford's uh, Tolisso. This is a very good side. Rashford makes it 1-0 in Bayern Munich's favour. Reese Oxford goes off with an injury. Tolisso makes it 2-0. Yeah, we are in over our head. 20 minutes to go. Let's see if we can get an away goal just to salvage something from this first leg. Nah, a 2-0 loss. That's The Bayern Munich have a very good side. I've said it three, four times now, but I, I mean it. That is a good team. All right, it is time for the home leg. We've got a lot of problems for this one. Oxford out. A lot of our players tired, but we're going to give it our, our all and see if we can get ourselves somehow pull off a minor miracle and get ourselves through to the Champions League final. I mean, we're 2-0 down. We're going to need goals early here. Come on. Can we get results? Let's go, lads. We get a goal. Oh, they get a goal back. All right, we need to score what? 4-3. We need to win this one 4-1, I think, because they've gotten away goal. We got none. So what's that now? 3-1 in their favor. We need to get it to 4-3. We've got 20 minutes to score three goals. I'm not looking the, not liking the looks of it. Yep, Sanson gets a second goal. Bayern Munich knock us out 4-1. We came close, but that Bayern Munich side is just too good for us. Get in there, fellas. Chesterfield fans, not sure how many of you are watching this video, but savor the side of this. Your team are Premier League champions in the 2025-26 season. We finish one point ahead of Man City and win the Premier League title. But most importantly, that means we will be playing Champions League football in Season 10. Looking at the drop zone, it is QPR, Swansea City and Bournemouth all getting relegated. We made it to the semi-finals of the FA Cup where we lost to Sunderland of all sides. I believe that's the time. Is it the time we derby? 
whatever it is, they're versing Newcastle in the FA Cup final and they lost 2-0. Tyneside, Tyneweir, I can't remember. I just know that they're big, they're, they're big rivals. And we made it to the Carabao Cup final where we unfortunately lost to Chelsea 3-2 in the final. No surprise to see that Bayern Munich went on and won the Champions League final. Their squad was insane. They took down Chelsea 1-0 and AS Roma took down AC Milan to win the Europa League final 2-0. So this season absolutely, it surprised me a lot. We blew the competition out of the water. Almost bloody completed the damn rebuild. Let's see if we can bring in some more key pieces to the squad in season 10 and have another good crack at winning the Champions League final. We are going to kick off Season 10 here with a new defensive signing. Alan Franco joining us here from Sevilla. Another release clause bargain, 86 rated, 20.7 million pounds. Welcome to Chesterfield. One of our regen players that we signed earlier on in the rebuild has been sold. Victor Ramos Gomez is off to Zenit for 16.5 million pounds. And we bring ourselves in a new right back now. Timothy Fosu Mensa joining us here at Chesterfield for 21 million pounds. So we boost up our defense this window. Franco, Franco, Franco and Fosu Mensa into the club. Ramos Gomez out of it. This is what our starting 11 looks like. The obvious point we need to improve on is Zinchenko, but is this side good enough to go even further in the Champions League this season? We will find out. Let's go and see what our group is for the 10th season. So this is a very tough group here. Definitely harder than what we had last season. Roma, Leipzig, and Ajax. We're going to need a bit of luck on our side, but we need to step up and perform. Can we get back to the round of 16? Let's find out. Well, okay. I'll take that for sure. We get ourselves through to the knockout rounds again. Not a single loss. We actually did better than last season. The rest of the group was very, very close as well, though. Roma are the team that join us in the knockout rounds. I'm sure Leipzig feel pretty hard done by. Ajax had a good shift as well. But as we switch to the tournament tree now... Again, looking at the top left-hand corner, we're facing Borussia Dortmund in the last 16, which should be quite interesting. And here we are on the 1st of January, just about halfway through the Premier League season, and it is good to see we are absolutely crushing it this season, sitting in first position, 10 points clear of Chelsea, 13 points clear of Everton and Watford. This is fantastic to see. We just need to try pushing for Champions League every single season. And again, Liverpool and Arsenal, I feel like a broken record. They have really struggled in this really rebuild. And I'm hoping one of them get relegated at some point just for banter purposes. So Reese Oxford is leaving us here on deadline day. The English centre-back is off to Leverkusen for £28 million. Pounds. And we upgrade the left-back spot. Blas Riveros coming across from Manchester United. £21.5 million. Pounds plus Zinchenko, that is a massive pickup, and in my opinion, sets us up to be big-time contenders for the Champions League this season. So, a pretty busy January window in comparison to what we normally do, but Blas Riveros into the club, Zinchenko and Oxford out of it, our starting 11 looking really impressive. Excited to see how we can go in the knockout rounds this season. But let's take on Borussia Dortmund. Alright, so the away leg to start things off here. Can we get a big result? Can we get ourselves to the quarterfinals? Can we just get ourselves back to where we were last season and then go a step further? That's the perfect start. Blas Riveros in the second minute making it 1-0 in our favor an injury there to Coton Perez hopefully it is not a long-term one but let's see if we can get some more away goals on the board that would be amazing that would really help us out for the second leg it's 1-0 they get an equalizer which is not what we were after come on let's get a second away goal Vega who else the Mexican superstar gets us a 2-1 lead Pereira red carded in 88 minutes that is all right a good advantage to have headed into leg two. All right, time for the home leg now. Unfortunately, our midfield superstar is out for a couple more weeks. Probably going to miss the quarterfinals if we get past Dortmund. But let's see what we can do now in this game. We've got the advantage. 2-1 up, I believe. 
They're missing uh, their Pereira, so they've got Holgate. They get an away goal, which is not good. Schick equalizes. Come on. We need to get our lead back. I think we're still ahead, but we need to make sure it's comfortable. No more away goals for them. Otherwise, we are in big trouble, and they get another away goal. 2-1 in Dortmund's favor. Fosu Mensa equalizes. Does that mean we are going to go through? I believe it does. How good is that? So, we are facing Monaco in the quarterfinals here of the Champions League. They were in our group last season. They didn't even get out of the group last season, if my memory serves me right. So, hopefully they can perform similar to that this season. Let's get back to the semifinals. All right, the away leg up first. Always happy about that. That is good news. Let's see if we can get a result, though. Get a strong first leg performance in. That would be absolutely brilliant. Early goals, please. Full strength starting 11 out there. Two goals in the 20th minute. We get an away goal. They get a home goal. That is odd. That's very odd. We must have scored from the kickoff. But if we get another away goal, that would be great. We do. Gomez stepping up big time. Getting a brace. 20 minutes. Can he get a hat trick? I would love if he got a hat trick. Final 10 minutes. Not looking likely. No. 2-1 advantage headed into the second leg. All right. Second leg time. Let's get ourselves back to the Champions League semi-finals, back to where we belong. We're 2-1 up here, two away goals. Big performance needed from the lads. Gomez gets a hat-trick across both legs. 3-1 up. He has stepped up big in this knockout phase. We're 3-1 up. Monaco need two goals, no questions about it. They need two goals if they want to send this one to extra time. If we can get another goal, that would just about secure our spot in the semi-finals. Time's running out here for Monaco. We're getting close. Getting close to being back in the semi-finals. There it is. Coton Perez does get us a 4-1 advantage. And we are back in the Champions League semis. So, we're going to be facing Bayer Leverkusen in the Champions League semi-finals. Very interesting matchup, this one. Interested to see what Leverkusen's side is looking like. But, can we get ourselves through to the Champions League final here to take on either Atletico Madrid or Man City. We're about to find out. Looking at Leverkusen's results, though, they've taken down Barcelona and PSG. Not exactly easy task to do, so we might have our hands full here. All right, time for the first leg at home, which is not a good sign. You guys know I love the, the away leg first, but the good thing is we've got a full-strength starting 11. Let's get a big lead here. We need that, but they've got a good side here, Leverkusen. Leno in between the sticks. Very strong side, but Coten Perez does get us an early goal here. The biggest thing, and I'm probably about to jinx myself by saying this, but the biggest thing is not to concede an away goal. Vega goes ahead. We concede an away goal, but Vega makes it 2-1 in our favor. He's got to be player of the episode, no matter what. See, I'm going to keep him the whole rebuild just so he can stay here and be player of the episode, but Tiedemans did get a third goal to make it 3-1 in the 84th minute. That is a strong first leg. All right, the away leg now against Leverkusen. One result away from getting ourselves into the Champions League final. 3-1 up, heading into the game. An early away goal will cancel out their away goal advantage, I guess you could call it. But nothing happening so far, and that's fine for us. If it stays, as long as we keep a clean sheet, we go through. Sheik does get us an away goal. Tielemans gets another away goal. Stengs gets a goal for them as well. So we are in big, big cruise control mode. 5-2 up, I believe it is. With 10 minutes to go, lads. We're going to be going to the Champions League final. Campbell injured off the bench. But fortunately, he's only a bench player. We're going to the Champions League final to face either Atletico Madrid or Manchester City. So we will be facing Manchester City in the Champions League final. The 10th season. Can we claim Champions League glory? Or will we have to delay it until an 11th season? We are about to find out. But Man City have had a very difficult run to the final. Real Madrid in the round of 16, Juve in the quarters, and Atletico Madrid in the semis. Obviously, they won on away goals rule, I'm assuming, or maybe even penalties, but that is huge. We're into the Champions League final. Taking a look around the grounds at the other competitions, Inter Milan took down Everton to win the Europa League. We go back to back in the Premier League. Another Premier League title, finishing the season on 80 points. Definitely a much more poor second half of the season, but we crush Man City and win the league by 10 points. So, 
if we don't beat Man City tonight, Champions League is assured for an 11th season. Brighton, West Brom, and Aston Villa are all relegated as well. And I mean, Spurs have to consider themselves lucky only not relegated due to goal difference. We won the Community Shield against Newcastle at the start of the season. Everton won the FA Cup 3-0 against Wolves and we're nowhere to be seen. And we were eliminated in the quarterfinal of the Carabao Cup by Wimbledon FC or should I say MK Dons. Not a big fan of them, but we're eliminated by them in the quarters. Crystal Palace went on to win the Carabao Cup. So, we're going to have a look at our squad report at the end of this season. Hopefully, it's the last time we have to have a look at it. Hopefully, we will win the Champions League final tonight against Man City. This squad has been really difficult to put together. One of the hardest rebuilds I'd say I've ever done. There was a stage there in the rebuild where I thought maybe this was going to take 20 seasons. Heck, it might still take 20 seasons, but we're in a position now to win the Champions League final. And I'm hopeful that we can get that done. If this is the end of the episode, if we win it, that man there is going to be a player of the episode. They will not be in FIFA 19. Can we send Chesterfield out on a high? Let's find out. All right, it's corner here for Man City. Leroy Sane, 18th minute. Putting that one in there, falls straight to the feet there, but they get the ball back. Murillo, Gomez chasing. Trying to win the ball back. Raheem Sterling, going there to Leon Goretzka, going to Sterling, off the crossbar. How do you even get the shot off in the first place there? Continuing to attack us here, Man City. Foden going through to Sane. They get the shot off, and it's another big save there from Donnarumma. All right, it's a free kick here. Las Riveros. We don't really have anybody tall enough to really get on the end of that one, but I'm going to try it out anyways. Going to go in there. Vega's open. Heads it into the ground and then into the gloves of Edison. How did Vega even get so much space there? Sergio Gomez going here to Vega. Going to Schick. Playing it through to Sergio Gomez. Heavy touch. And the heavy touch costs us. That was a golden opportunity to take the lead. Free kick here for Man City. Goretzka going back to Sane. Good stuff. Here we go. Counter attack potentially happening here. Schick. Feed it. Goes through to Vega. Vega. Feeds it again to Schick. There's birds going off outside out my window. And it distracts us. It's play on steel. I thought there might have been a penalty. Gomez looking for somebody. Falls to Gomez. Tap it in. What a, what a weird goal. Sheik gives us the lead in the Champions League final. I have no idea what has just happened. But we will take it. One of the scrappiest goals in rebuild history. And we have a 1-0 lead here over Man City. The man who missed it initially. Patrick Schick diving in. Collecting the scraps. And getting us the lead. What is going on? Free kick here for Man City. 20 minutes remaining in what has been a somewhat lackluster final. Not too many highlights to talk about. But it's going in there. What a save from Gianluigi Donnarumma. Saving what could have been a certain goal there for Murillo. Fosu Mensa. Come on. We need to get that second goal. Shore things up a little. Blas Riveros. Looking for some options. Going here. Just go straight past the defender. Riveros again. Come on. Win that Vega. Falls to Maguire, falls to Coton Perez here. And Tuno's Ribeiro outside the box, well over. Man City, probably one last opportunity for them to launch this ball forward. Maguire heaves it upfield. Come on, get it away. And there it is. We're going to win the Champions League final. 1-0 with Chesterfield. One of the toughest rebuilds we have ever done. 10 seasons. That was absolutely insane. And a scrappy Patrick Schick goal sees us get our hands on the Champions League title. What a satisfying win that is. Fellas, 
If you enjoyed today's rebuild, make sure you leave a like on the video. Make sure you bloody scorpion kick that subscribe button down below if you are new around here. It has been Jared HD. Enjoy the title celebrations. I am out. Peace. This can't be the end, no. Yeah, you raise the bar.